Vice President uh, Kamala Harris and some over the weekend to do her I ain't no ways tired business. And um, she had uh, this to say before she got into the race hustling stuff okay. about uh, Israel and Hamas in the Middle East. I will repeat the threat of Hamas poses to the people of Israel must be eliminated. And given the immense scale of suffering in Gaza, there must be an immediate ceasefire. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, that's a wow, that's, that's a, a dandy talk. that's a dandy Frank Ooh. Drebin impersonation she does. I'm short-handed already, Wilma. I promise you, whatever scum did this, not one man on this force will rest for one minute until he's behind bars. Now let's grab a bite to eat. Yeah, come on. Uh, yeah. So, um, right. The, the threat of Hamas must be eradicated. Oh, wow. Now let's have a six-week ceasefire. I, I'm I'm struggling to follow the logic, but perhaps um, our friend Steve Bucci can help me. Steve Bucci served America for three decades as Army Special Forces and uh, top Pentagon official. He's a visiting fellow at the Heritage Foundation's Allison Center for Foreign Policy Studies. Steve, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's great to be back on the show. So um, help me with... Uh, with the vice president's logic. Well, I I would love to tell you I could sort that out, but I can't. I'm with you. You can't have it both ways. You're supporting Israel in the elimination of Hamas, which that first part I agree with. The second part does not compute. I you know, I'm really sorry that people are suffering, but their government and the people they cheered for on September or October 7th started this, did this, admitted to it, posted it online, cheered about it, and now they're going, oh, but everybody needs to help us. They're being mean to us. And, but no, they're, they're doing what they said they were going to do. They're going to eliminate Hamas. Well, and, they can't and have it both ways, and, and, Madam and, Vice President. And Hamas also said they'll do it again, too. So with respect to those uh, peace talks going on in Cairo, there seems to be some um, conflicting reports, because on the one hand, uh, the report was Israel agreed to the framework of a six-week ceasefire in exchange for hostages. But in another report in The New York Times, Israel uh, left the table because Hamas would not provide a list of hostages who are alive, but, you know, in bad condition. So do we have the pro what's your sense of whether or not we're on the cusp of a six week ceasefire or some kind of deal or not? I, I don't think we are. I, I think uh, the American White House is in la la land again. Uh, you know, President Biden said, oh, no, it's going to happen on Monday. That was you know, two right. weeks ago. Uh, and they clearly are out of touch with what's going on. It, it's, that's not happening. Netanyahu is not going to give away the farm to make Joe Biden and Kamala Harris happy. Well, why did Kamala, Kamala Harris deliver that message instead of President Biden? Probably because President Biden would have, you know, somebody might have asked him if he delivered it. Well, didn't you just say the same thing, you know, a week ago about this past Monday? Uh, so there was room there for an embarrassing question, which we know Joe Biden doesn't do well with embarrassing questions. He gets hostile and rude. Uh, so they used the giggly girl instead uh, to deliver it and make it sound like, you know, she's got control of things. And they don't. This is not a U.S. decision. I don't know why our politicians think we get to make this call. We I don't. don't. I don't it's, it's a yeah. Israeli decision. Well, right. Not to mention, you know, the the, uh, the 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 differing approach, right? When it comes to Zelensky in Ukraine, hey, 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 that's a Ukraine decision. That's a decision uh, for Kiev to make. When it comes to uh, a ceasefire or not, hey, hey, Bibi's taking it too far, and this and that. So, they, but but they don't. I don't think they really believe they have any impact. 
it's just they're just playing domestic politics with it, right? They want to be on both sides. They want to signal to their Jewish constituents, we support Israeli's right to, to defend itself, but then also be critical of Bibi because he's a conservative and a lot of American Jews are not, most. And then I'll uh, say, you know, and the Palestinian people, it, 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 you rally them too. So, you know, Rashida Tlaib and the squad, you know, quiets down a bit. So, I mean, it, this is all just a domestic political posturing to me. I, I believe you're right. I mean, I live in Michigan, and we just had the primary here, and you know, a hundred plus, hundred thousand plus people voted non-committal in the Democratic part of the primary uh, because they were mad at Joe Biden because of of his Israeli policy, uh, and that I think scared the heck out of the White House. They realized that you know, pretty solid block of votes that they had from the very large, the largest Arab population center in the world outside the Middle East, which is in Dearborn, Michigan, voted pretty heavily non-committed in the primary to send a message to Joe Biden that they don't like his policy. Well, yeah, I understand why they don't like his policy, but, but the policy of supporting Israel is the right one in this case. And, but the, you know, Biden team wants it both ways. They want to be able to say they're supporting Israel, say they're supporting the Palestinians, and it's really hard to, to lie in two directions. You get caught. Uh, I wanted to get uh, your take on military culture in 2024 America. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, Trans Space Force Lieutenant uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bree Farm. Yeah. This is a uh, man pretending to be a woman. Uh, giving a a dissertation on pronoun usage. Take a listen. All too often, I hear leaders talk about providing everyone with dignity and respect like it's an aspirational goal. That's not good enough. Dignity and respect is the bare minimum. It's the floor of where we can be. We must set our sights higher and focus on intentional inclusivity because there are still far too many people out there, not just LGBTQ individuals, that feel marginalized, shut out, or discriminated against. So for all of you out there, I ask you to set out your symbols of pride, share your pronouns in your email, particularly if you're a person who doesn't think they need to, initiate difficult conversations about racial and gender barriers, and share a bit of your vulnerability in a way that draws others in. You all have the power to take intentionally inclusive actions to ensure the multiple perspectives that we know make us stronger as we devise winning war fighting strategies get heard. Uh, Stephen, we've uh, come a long way from a clinger dressing up like a woman to get out of that MASH unit in Korea, haven't we? Yes, we have indeed. Uh, you know, we even got people dressing up like dogs and stuff in their dress uniforms for formal photos. Uh, I, I dressing just, up like I, dogs in the military. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. For their formal it, photos? Are you serious? They yeah. identify as a canine. It, it, it's, you know, I got all the respect in the world for the military canines, but not the ones that walk on two legs. They, they're yeah. somewhat less capable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well don't, what, so, what do you think our enemies are thinking when they see this this girl guy up there? I, I don't care what our enemies are thinking. I want to know what we're thinking. I want to know what we're thinking with Bree Fram and you know her 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 lectures, her sermons to the enlisted about all of this business. Um, and and obviously that's with the imprimatur of the brass, uh, which he which which he is part of the brass. He's a lieutenant colonel. So so I mean uh, you know we we talk about this all the time in the context of K through twelve education or or higher education. I mean, is the military culturally lost now? Have we lost that too? Uh, yeah, we're, we're lost. Uh, you know, uh, first our, our enemies laugh at us when they see this, or at, at best scratch their heads in you know in in, in comprehension uh, to our own folks. If you want to look at the reason we're having recruiting problems right now, it is completely based on this kind of craziness. What American family wants their son or daughter to join the military so that they have to sit and listen to a guy dressed as a girl sit there and harangue them about how if we only you know, let 
everybody be who they are, our military will be stronger. I mean, Ray Charles can see that's nonsense, and but we we allow it, we give it a voice, we give it that stamp of approval of the chain of command. Uh, I, it's going to take a while to fix this when we get people come in that are are actually not brain dead. Uh, this is a one percent or less of our population, but we are now twisting every one of our institutions, including the ones that we depend on for our safety, to allow them to have this gigantic voice way above what their numbers or their importance in our society should allow. And and people applaud and say, oh, this is the way of the future. Yeah, not if you want the future to be a positive thing. Uh, it's just crazy. Right. The old Reagan line, if this is our future, I'm selling my bonds. Uh, Stephen Bucci uh, served America for three decades, Army Special Forces officer and top Pentagon official. He's a visiting fellow at Heritage Foundation's Allison Center for Foreign Policy Studies. Stephen, thanks as always. Appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. This is Chicago's Morning Answer. Your show keeps me alive during the week. There's nobody I'd rather listen to between 5 and 9 in the morning than you guys. On AM 560, The Answer. There is a place in northern Illinois where people have